Okay, dear students, uh, this is Mustafa Ahmed Mirchawala from Mirchawala's Hub of Accountancy, your FR trainer. And today we are going to discuss one past paper. I'm going to help you in one past paper and then you can solve it on the software of ACC, right? Okay, so before we move on, the past paper is latest past paper for March, June 24 attempt consolidation. And one good news to share with you in this recent attempt, we have got world top, world top in F7 means out of 180 countries, our student scored highest marks. Okay, so big congratulation for this guy, Sadullah, the world top student and for the whole team MHA. Okay, and this guy is a motivation for all of you when he can do this. You guys can also do this. Plus, there are a lot of students who scored in 80s, 90s this time. So, as this is the last month going on, so you guys can follow these full footsteps, right? Now, we have this question of consolidation. I'm going to just discuss this question with you so that you have got you got confidence and then you can solve solve it on the software right okay so this scenario relates to two requirements on 1st July x9 P company this Pesla company is the basically P company P company paid 100 million cash to acquire 80% of Scottish that is COI this is COI and yes coi is already recorded in the investment side so first thing out of this see this is the investment your investment is 297000 on the parent company asset side the investment is 29700 so out of this 297 100000 is the coi 100000 is the coi for s company and definitely you know that it will be cancelled when we will be preparing when we will be preparing consolidated sofp this as coi will be cancelled okay so out of this 297,000, 100,000 100, is the 100,000 is the COI, okay? And the holding percentage is 80%. One more, one more message, very important message. See, you, the takeover date is 1st July X9. The takeover date is 1st of July X9, okay? But the year end is 31st December X9. So the second message is, this is the mid-year acquisition, exactly mid of the year. We took over this company exactly on the mid of the year. Okay, now what they are saying. The fair value of Scottish companies net assets. Now wait, 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 hold, 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 hold. Let me make the timeline because you know, you do consolidation, you guys have done in the class the consolidation using the net asset method okay so let me prepare let me prepare the acquisition date and reporting date net assets okay so first of all this is your accounting period first january x9 to 31st of december x9 okay but your takeover date is the mid of the year which is first july x9 okay so this packet is acquisition date net assets and the second one will be this is going to reporting date net assets of S company okay so you will have ordinary share capital here as well as here let me check what is the ordinary share capital ordinary share capital see this is 40,000 it never changes you know it will come here 40,000 as well as this place 40,000 so same ordinary share capital no change same ordinary share capital yes the retained earning the retained earning here is 81,700 the retained earning here is 81,700. Now, what we have to do? We need to calculate the retained earning at the mid of the year. Let me help you guys. Retain earning at the mid of the year. No, it's not an abnormal question. It's a routine question. Believe me, it's a routine question. Or I would say you have done more difficult question in the exam kit. In the exam kit, the 
questions are more difficult than this. So this is this latest past paper is easy. Now, can you read this point number three? All of you, respected students, can you read this point number three? Yes. Scottish made a loss, loss of 10 million for the year ended 31st December X9. Leave that company Angus. Angus is basically associate. Just forget about the associate. Just, just concentrate on the subsidiary. So subsidiary has a 10 million loss. 10 million means 10,000 loss for the whole year. 10,000 loss for the whole year. So our takeover date is mid of the year. Our takeover date is mid of the year. So that means the 5,000 loss. The 5,000 loss belongs to this side. 5,000 loss belongs to this side. Okay. Now use your brain. This loss is already deducted. This loss has already been deducted from closing retain earning. Or you say if it if if it would be a profit, if it would be a profit, that means it has already been added in the closing retain earning. But now as it is a loss, so this loss has already been deducted from closing retain earning. So now we need to come back. We need to do reverse working. We do we need to apply reverse gear. So eighty one seven hundred plus five thousand is okay. So finally, 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 we made the packet. We made the packet of acquisition date. Still fair value adjustment is left, but that's all routine things, routine things. You can do it easily. Right. So note number one. Now, the fair value of Scottish Scottish means S company. The fair value of Scottish company's net assets were equal to their carrying amounts, with the exception of its head office. The this had a fair value of twelve million in excess, in excess, in excess of its carrying amount. At the date of acquisition, it had a remaining life of 10 years. Very easy. Very, very easy. It's simply upward fair value adjustment. It's simply upward fair value adjustment and a little bit depreciation adjustment, which is very easy nowadays because we follow net asset method. We follow net asset method. Let me show you. So, you know, it's C is equal to A minus L. Okay. So, 12 million asset is going up. So, 12 million net asset will also go up. So you will write fair value adjustment here, which is 12,000. But as it is a depreciating asset, so what will be the depreciation? The depreciation will be 12,000 divided by 10 years. So this will be 1,200 per annum, 10 years, years. So 1,200 per annum, but the gap, but the gap between acquisition date and year end is six months. So you need to do six upon 12, six upon 12. So 600 is your depreciation. 600 is your depreciation. So the value of the asset here you adjusted here you adjusted 12,000. Now this 12,000 will be go down will go down by 600. So how much will be the value the fair value adjustment value at the year end head office will be 11,400 11,400 my respected student this will be 11,400. Okay, you got it. Okay, so now the next thing, one more thing, this closing 11,400, you know that this closing 11,000, whatever you are adding in the closing net asset packet, it will also be adjusted at the asset side. So at the asset side, you need to write 11, sorry, 11,400. Okay, this 11,400 will be adjusted in the asset side as well. You know this, these things, routine things. Okay, 
now note number two note number two is purely 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 note number two is associate associate significant influence come on active note number two is associate on 1st july x9 again mid of the year again mid of the year parsley company acquired 40 percent of the angus 40 percent shares means associate simple now what are the consideration parsley company paid 30 million cash this is one of the coi this is the one of the coi for this for this acquisition okay for this 40 percent shares in addition it in addition to this parsley company issued the to the previous owner of angus company a 30 million shares in Pasley company which had a market value of 2.3 each at 1st July X9. Excellent. The total consideration exceeds the group share of Angus net asset. This is irrelevant. Leave it. No issue. Pasley company has only recorded the cash consideration. Excellent. Excellent. So that what does it means? In the asset side, there is a 30 million there is a 30 million which is already recorded 30,000 already recorded in this so again you need to remove this 30,000 from normal investments from normal investments because this 30,000 will be the part of carrying value of investment and associate this 30,000 will be the part of carrying value of investment and associate which we will write separately always write separately okay right so now we need to make the entry for this note number two, the entry for note number two. See, parent company just bought 40% shares, 40% shares of associate, but parent company paid two types of consideration. Number one is cash consideration, which is clearly given 30 million. And number two is shares consideration for which, which has not been recorded. So we need to make double entry for that. We need to make double entry for that please wake up wake up don't sleep don't sleep let me make the entry so parent company give 30 million shares or you can say 30 million chocolates parent companies give 30 million chocolates as a consideration okay and the fair value of one chocolate fair value of one chocolate market value is 2.3 okay listen so shares consideration for Angus, I think this is the name, or A company, okay? Okay. So the amount will be 30 million. 30 million means 30,000. Multiply by 2.3 per share. 2.3 per share multiply by 2.3 per share wait Multiply by 2.3 per share. So 30,000 multiplied by 2.3 will give you, wait. Into 2.3. This is going to be 69,000. Yes, this is the consideration. This is the amount of consideration. This is the amount of consideration. Okay. So let's make the entry. First of all, parent company just bought the shares of another company. Parent company just bought the shares of another company. So investment debit. We'll write investment debit 69,000 in return parent company in return parent company issued this much share see these shares 30,000 shares okay so whoever whoever issues shares whenever any company issues shares we credit the share capital with the face value so 30,000 shares multiplied by face value is one you can see the balance sheet 30,000 shares multiplied by face value is one so it's 30,000 okay so 69 minus 30, 69 minus 30 is 39,000 difference will go in the share premium, will go in the share premium, okay, right? 
so this is the entry this is the entry which they have not made which they have not made they have not made this is the entry which they have not made so this debit side is the part of coi and yes these shares parent company has issued parent company has issued to external shareholders of a company so definitely we need to adjust this on the credit side of the sofp we need to adjust this share capital and share premium on the credit side of the parent company's sofp let me do it for you please check it out this is just shares consideration cash consideration is separate that's a separate thing i'll tell you so how can you see this this is parent company's sofp so on the equity side 30000 will increase as a share capital and there is no share premium so just incorporated there is no share premium in the original balance sheet so just my dear student incorporated like 39000 this so now in the consolidated balance sheet which you are which you guys are going to prepare you have to prepare it okay you will write the share capital of parent company because definitely parent company share capital comes in the consolidated balance sheet okay so this will be 270 plus 30 this this whole this 300000 will come and then share premium of 39000 will come because these are the real share issue real share issue which parent company has to record okay parent company has not yet recorded these share issue okay so this will be the part of consolidated balance sheet this will be the part of consolidated balance sheet let me give you one logic because there are students they don't know the logic why i have added listen let me give you one very good logic listen see this is p company and this is a company okay p company bought 40% shares but p company has bought shares from some a company's shareholders a company's shareholders okay parent company will make deal with these people so these are external people so now parent company has issued some shares parent company has issued some some shares to these external guys so this will never be cancelled this will be recorded these new shares will definitely be recorded they are issued outside the group to a common man to normal people okay right now one more thing as a student you may ask you may ask very easy thing sir whenever whenever associate question comes whenever associate question come we have to do few things one thing on the asset side and one thing on the equity side yes on the asset side we need to calculate carrying value of investment in associate yes 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 on the asset side we need to calculate carrying value of investment in associate carrying value of investment in associate carrying value of investment in associate okay now what it will be please tell me so this will be coi coi there are two types of coi in this question number one is cash consideration cash consideration was 30 million means 30000 and my dear student shares consideration will be shares consideration will be shares consideration will be 69000 okay just see this just see this 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 is shares consideration this is so this total will be 30 and 60 99000 now you need to add add post post profits post profits of a company right multiply by your share post profits of a company multiply by your share now you need to check note number 2 or 3 wait let me check note number 3 yes scottish company note number 3 please scottish company made a loss of 10 million this yes subsidiary we have already accounted for and angus company angus associate made a profit of 6 million for the same period profit profit so for the whole year for the whole year the profit is 6000 for the whole year the profit is 6000 but we bought the shares in the mid of the year we bought the shares in the mid of the year so our post period is only 6 months okay so 6000 into 6 upon 12 multiplied by your holding percentage is 40 percent definitely associate share of profit associate share of profit so this will be 3000 multiplied by 40 percent is 1200 okay so 99,000 plus 1,200 is 99,000 plus 1,200 is 1 
डबल जीरो Okay, so carrying now one more thing, very routine thing. There is a double entry for this. There is a double entry. Just those who love double entry, the double entry is investment in associate debit, investment in associate debit. In my class, I even made it twelve hundred and consolidated retained earning, retained earning or consolidated retained earning or P and L credit. So this twelve hundred will also go in retained earning. This twelve hundred will. Also, be added in consolidated retained earning. Hope you remember this. You know you have done. You have done the course. So on the asset side, it will come here. On the asset side, it will come in the carrying value of investment and associate. And on the equity side, it will go. It will be the part of retained earning. Retained earning means consolidated retained earning. Okay. So, my respected students, this will be. This this will be part of your asset side. This one zero one one double zero two hundred. This one double zero two hundred will be part of your asset side. This one double zero two hundred will be the part of your asset side. Will be part of your asset side. Okay. I hope you understood it. It's not a difficult job. Now next thing. Note number two is almost done. Note number two is almost done. Note number three, yes, we have done. Now note number four, a little bit new. It's related to IFRS nine. It's related to IFRS nine. Hope you remember. If in IFRS nine, when you invest in financial assets, you have debt market as well as equity market. You have debt market as well as equity market. Remember. So if you invest in debt market, if you invest, sorry, if you invest in equity market, you have fair value through PNL as well as fair value through OCI. You have two categories: fair value through PNL as well as fair value through OCI. Okay, now let's do it. Paisley Company and Scottish both means parent and subsidiary both, both, both company hold other equity investment. They are doing invest. Uh, just think, parent company has invested in subsidiary. Yes. In associate, yes, but parent company has also invested in the stock market. Parent company has also invested in stock market as well. Parent company has also invested in stock market as well. So this is the story. No election has been made to classify it. Okay, so this is fair value through PNL category. This is basically fair value through PNL category. This is this is fair value through PNL category. This is fair value through PNL category. Okay. Right now, at 31st December X9, these investments have increased by 15 and 3 million respectively, but no other entries have been made to reflect this. All of these gains have been made in the post acquisition period. Yes, this is the post period. So, this 15 million gain purely related to P company and this is related to S company. So, whatever the gain whatever the gain parent company has earned it will go pure purely in the parent company's retained earning and when it will go in the parent company's retained earning pure consolidated reserve will go up pure because this is parent company's gain but whatever whatever gain is made by subsidiary company subsidiary company that gain will be the part of cr and nci both retained earning and nci both why because we are holding for subsidiary companies, I think 70 or 80 percent. We can see 80 percent, yes. So 20 percent will go in the NCI, but we have some automatic things. We have some automatic things for these, right? So let me first solve it for you. Listen, first of all, out of this 297,000, this 100 and this 30 will be cancelled. So 297 minus 100 minus 30, these will be cancelled. Plus plus fifteen thousand is the revaluation. 
plus 15,000 is the revaluation. Out of this 297,000, first you need to remove 100,000 and 30,000. Clean it. Clean it from within group investment. So 297 minus 100 minus 30. This will be, let me check. Let me tell you the number. 297, 297 minus 130. So this will be 167. This will be 167. Okay. And this 167 is basically other investments of fair value through PNL. Now these investments will go up by 15,000. So at the year end, parent company's investment will be 167 plus 15. Now come to the subsidiary side. This 11,000 is purely outside investment. And yes, these investment will also go up by 3,000. So 11 plus 3, 14. Now, what will be the total investment, total other investment that will be, that will appear, that will appear in consolidated SOFP. Listen, these two, this plus this means 167 plus 15 plus 14, 167 plus 15 plus 14 is I think yes 196 this 196,000 will be the other investment this 196,000 will be other investments okay now wait as a student you may ask sir do you need do we need to make double entry no in our course there is there are no without entry you can do it so this 15,000 pure entries investment debit and PNL credit Investment debit and PL credit means parent company's PL credit. So parent company's profits will go up. So automatically consolidated retain earning will go up. But for this 3000, be careful. For this 3000, for this 3000, this is the gain of S company. This is the gain of S company. So on the asset side, we, we increase the investment debit. And on the equity side, what we'll do, listen, let me show you. We simply, you know, whatever whatever the incomes and losses whatever the incomes and losses of s company we adjust here so fair value gain on investment is 3000 investment in 3000 I, I hope you remember when you add when you add anything in the closing net asset packet automatically automatically it will hit your post retain earning automatically it will hit your post retain earning s company's post retain earning and we all know S company's post retain earning goes in CR and NCI bill. That's it. Okay. No need to make the entry because whenever you post here, things get automat automatically posted. Okay. Now let's come. One last, one last adjustment. Scottish company and Angus company have sold goods to Pasley. We call it S to P or A to P. Okay. For many years. None of now see the none of these goods remain at the group at 30. So there is no URP. There is no URP. So no, no intra group adjustment for P2S or S2P sale. No URP. See, none of these goods remain in the group. No URP adjustment. Thank God. Okay. But yes, there is an adjustment of cash in transit, which you guys love it. This is one of the favorite adjustment of examiner. Now be careful. Read slow, slow, tuk, 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 slow, slow. Pesle company financial statements show a payable of 5 million, 5 million payable to Scottish company. This disagreed with the amount of receivable in the financial statements of Scottish company due to 2 million payment made by Pesle. Payment made by Pesle. Important point on 31st December X9. Can you guys make the entry? Do you have this much expertise? This is the game. Always check who's who 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 is having payable in their books. 
this is the important point and who made the payment so parent company has got payable parent company has got payable in their books and parent company made the payment but i'll explain you don't worry first if you want to read it again read it i'll tell you the whole story as well as the double entry thing as well the shortcut as well now the story is this see this is p company this is s company now just rewind this transaction just before the year end the payable of payable of p company was 7 million okay and the receivable was also 7 million receivable of s company was also 7 million now wait parent company just made just just before one day one day of the year end parent company just made the payment parent company just made the payment of 2 million 2 million to s company so parent company immediately made this entry whenever any company makes the payment the entry will be payable debit the liability will be debit payable debit 2 million and cash credit 2 million okay so now parent company has already made this entry as the payment is done by parent company so parent company has already made this entry and parent company has also posted posted means they have reduced so now how much this payable that's why that's why you can read in the question that after making the payment of 2 million after making the payment of 2 million the payable is 5 million okay so here we have 5 million payable but here we'll have 7 million receivable because this 2 million is cash in transit this 2 million is basically cash in transit okay so this is the expertise this is the expertise i say to my student that you must know this is sketch whenever you read the transaction automatically these sketches comes in your mind okay i repeat the 5 million payable is after making 2 million payments so that means the original payable was 7 million the original payable was 7 million which is agreed with the receivable of s company i say this in urdu language parent company ne 2 million ki payment karne ke baad unka payable 5 million hai to jab wo payment nahi hui hogi to 7 tha na so original amount 77 tha is tarah story tak pahunchte hain so let's make the entry just one entry and everything will be over see the entry will be how much payable is left how much payable is left 5 million and definitely we need to cancel these are intra so payable p company will be reduced by 5 million or we call, wait let me check the question the million is 1000 or what yes 1000 so 5000 right and as you know the cash was in transit cash was in the transit so all we always take the transit thing to one end so cash in transit will be debited will be added in the balance sheet 2000 and now tell me how much is the receivable how much is the receivable how much is the receivable of s company it's several million so receivable will also be cancelled because intercompany receivable s company 7 million okay now let me tell you the shortcut the shortcut is in the question you can go and read see this is the adjustment on which you should spend time this is the adjustment on which you should spend time see in the question in the question my dear student this 5 million was written yes and this 2 million cash was written so if you make the entry on the debit side then automatically the balancing figure will come on the credit side automatically the balancing figure will come on the credit side automatically the balancing figure will come on the credit side okay you getting the balancing figure will come on the credit side this is the entry of the whole transaction i give you just 30 seconds to see it to analyze it that's your right
now let me post let me do it posting for you as well so the payable of parent company will be reduced by 5000 or you can reduce any company's payable ultimately you need to add ultimately you need to add and then the receivable will be reduced by 7000 and yes the cash and cash of 2000 will be added that's it see the posting i have done the posting for you to be very honest you guys have done this in class many times so you should be in attacking mood now just eat it so finally 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 99 percent things are done yes the fair value of nci at acquisition is 29 million this is for goodwill thing this is for goodwill thing now just quick quick i will calculate goodwill nci and cr in just two three minutes okay just so first thing is goodwill goodwill calculation goodwill calculation so you will have coi yes on the first first line first line of the question it's hundred million hundred thousand okay L now as this is the full good fair value of nci at acquisition at acquisition it's 29000 okay so it's going to be 129000 now wait less fair value of net assets of s company okay wait 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 so this is the packet this is the packet this is the packet 40 plus 86 700 plus 12 One three eight seven hundred. One three eight seven hundred. One three eight seven hundred. One three eight seven double zero. One three eight seven double zero. So yes, there is a negative goodwill, or we call it gain on bargain purchase. Gain on bargain purchase it's income of parent company it's purely income of parent company 9700 income of p company income of p company because p company made this good deal income of p company and it will be added in retain earning complete amount retain earning or cr okay now before we move on to nci and cr first we need to calculate s company's post retain earning first see this is all routine job first we need to calculate s company's post retain earning let me do so just add up this packet add up this packet forty thousand plus eighty one seven hundred plus one one four hundred plus 3000 100 so take the difference 100 minus 138 700 oh, some mistake is there wait there is some mistake wait 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 in my calculation sorry 40000 plus 81700 plus 11400 plus 3000 yes 136100 1 1 3 6 1 double zero now take the difference 136100 minus one three eight seven hundred so this will be twenty six hundred s company's post retained earning is negative twenty six hundred this is going to be negative twenty six hundred it's a post period loss s company's post retained earning is negative twenty six hundred please you guys also use your calculator you guys can also use your calculator it's negative twenty six hundred okay so 
now let's calculate the next thing which is nci here let me do it here nci so it will be check it out fair value of nci at acquisition is equal to 29000 right add s company's post retain earning which is this time negative 2600 negative 2600 multiply by the nci percentage is 20 percent nci percentage is 20 percent so this will be 520 negative okay so my final nci for sofp nci for sofp will be 28480 the last thing i think is nci the last thing is the last thing is my dear student ncr sorry cr or you call it retain earning consolidated retain earning or cr so we'll write parent companies so first of all parent companies year end retain earning so what's the parent company's retain earning is 214300 see the screen 214300 yes okay then you will write s company's post retain earning share which is 2600 mu negative multiply by 20 percent sorry 80 percent now because our holding is 80 percent so 2600 2600 multiply by 0.8 will give you 2080 definitely negative now few things will directly you know few things which relates to parent company few things which relates to parent company directly goes in consolidated retain earning okay so that was investment gain in other invest sorry other investment gain fair value through pnl remember which related to parent company it was 15000 gain and there was some gain on bargain purchase gain on bargain purchase is 9700 okay anything else which we forgot i don't think yes yes sorry associate associate share of profit very important thing associate share of profit i think it was 1200 okay associate share of profit was 1200 let me see yes it was 1200 this is all adjusted Okay, so let's do it finally. This is two three eight one two zero. This is two three eight one two zero. Okay, two three eight one two zero. okay so finally see we have done the goodwill definitely goodwill is a negative number so it won't go in the asset side only it's your income so it will be added in consolidated retain earning you have already calculated cr as well nci yes it's here so finally only one thing i'm giving to on you that obviously you have to solve this question right from the scratch on the software this is the first assignment second thing i'm telling you that 
you need to in the end you need to do adding together property plant and equipment is very simple 215000 plus 87 plus 11400 which was fair value adjustment remember then on investment side i have calculated this this is the amount for other investment okay then you need to write carrying value of investment and associates separately i have calculated you can see you can see you can rewind or oh, definitely this is, you have the rewind option there is no goodwill in this question then current assets inventories will simply be added inventories will simply be added okay then trade receivable add these two and then subtract this amount then in cash 1300 2000 which is cash in transit and 9200 in this way you will total the asset side you will get the asset side total on the equity side this whole packet will be cancelled you all know s company's equity never comes so 270 plus 30,000. This is your share capital 300,000. Share premium 39,000. And instead of retain earning, you have calculated consolidated retain earning work it, working. You will post and also you will post NCI. Also, you will post NCI in the consolidated SOFP, which I have already calculated. Which I have already calculated. Finally, you will add these loan notes simple. And for trade payable side, this minus this and this your balance sheet will be balanced your balance sheet will be balanced okay one theory requirement is also there which we explain 100 times in the class see explain the rationale behind the elimination of intra group balances and unrealized profit in relation to sales made from parent to subsidiary company yes because because we are not preparing individual companies account we are preparing group accounts and whenever we prepare group accounts we treat complete group as, as a single entity we treat complete group as a single entity right so now parent and subsidiaries are one unit one single entity so if parent company is giving loan to somebody or subsidiary company is giving loan to pair sorry parent company is giving loan to subsidiary or subsidiary company giving loan to parent it's like we are giving loan to ourselves it's like we are giving loan to ourselves so we never record such loans in which we have given loan to us in my classes i give this example even i have made short videos in hindi urdu language for this that it's like we see the screen i have one pocket here i have one pocket here and from this pocket i'm taking out money and i'm putting in the other pocket so i'm my this pocket is giving loan to my jeans pocket so in terms of these single pockets these are receivable payable but for the body for the whole body this is not a transaction this is not the transaction same is the case with unrealized profit why we call this profit unrealized profit why we call because this is not yet earned the goods are moving inside the inside the group the goods are moving inside we have not earned this money from external sources we have not sold the goods to the external party yet okay so this you need to write for two marks so hope you guys understood everything every bit of it right and best of luck i would request you to solve it on the software it's very easy now i have explained you everything do it do it and this is needed this is needed even it's in the examiner comments that you need to practice hard because of the time management thing plus if you don't practice you won't be fluent in the exam you won't be fast in the exam okay so in my youtube channel i will also upload the ratio analysis because both questions examiner has uh, available on the acclobal.com the last 40 marks are also always available so i'm going to record the ratio class as well for you guys you can share these classes with your friends if you like these classes please write your feedback on the comment section subscribe the channel okay and we have all in in my channel we have f6 classes as well we have like sbr classes lot of past papers i have posted so thank you and take care bye bye